It's Monday once again, and that only means one thing. The Tracker is live on City TV. My guest for today is a special one. Now, the last time he and I had a conversation, we were in the thick of the COVID-19 pandemic. He was talking to us all the way from his base in Germany. He gave us an understanding of how they were dealing with COVID in Germany, how they managed to become the first league to return um, to action um, after the pandemic had actually subsided. Today, he is in here in the flesh with us in our studios. We'll be getting uh, to him on a lot of things. He's helped his team gain promotion from the Bundesliga 2 to the German Bundesliga. There's so much to discuss on the show today. And I'm sure that you uh, at home will enjoy the conversation as much as we here in the studio. We'll take a quick break here. When we come back, you know how we do it. Our motivational video is what will take center stage. Welcome back. Now, this one must be historic too, because this is the first time on the show where I'm doing a motivational video about the person who is about to be interviewed. It's never happened before. Um, I just want you to enjoy this one. When we come back in the studio, I'll introduce my guest to you, and then we'll get a conversation on the road. You have to have a reason in life. What is your reason? I am Ansunu Nusape. I am from Ghana and I'm a professional football player in Germany. I believe an athlete's mindset is very, very important. Because as an athlete, you have to be disciplined. And with discipline comes three things I believe in. Number one, an athlete has to be patient because you cannot make it to the top in a day. You need to work and wake up early in the morning and train. This is where we come to the second part, which is sacrifice. You have to sacrifice a lot of things. You sometimes have to sacrifice the time you can spend with your loved ones. The last thing I want to talk about is what you have to understand. You have to understand why you have to be patient. You have to understand why you have to sacrifice certain things. But it all comes down to what reason you have to be disciplined. Welcome back to the tracker here on City TV. My guest is right here on my left hand side. Hans Nunusape plays for Greater Firth in um, the Bundesliga. Uh, just a few months ago, they were in the Bundesliga too. Guess what? They've gained promotion to the Bundesliga itself. Hans, it's good to have you on the show. It's good to have you too on the show. It's good to be here. Nice. Uh, nice. I appreciate it. Nice. <laughs> just before we even get into any footballing conversations, that motivational video was something special. Now, tell me about that. Like, how did you get into making videos like that? Or is that even your first and only one? Yeah, this is, um, this is my first and only video, but um, we are working on more to come because, um, like I said in the video, mm -hmm. you have to have a reason. Mm -hmm. So I have a reason for these videos. Um, I, when I look back on my life, on my career, um, also from the things I have gone through, I have been through mm -hmm. um, since I left 
um, Ghana to Europe. Yeah. You know, it's it wasn't easy, and um, yeah, I feel there are a lot of um, people also going through the same things, and um, mentally they are not strong to to, to hold on, mm -hmm. to you know continue to yeah. um, fight and get whatever they want in life, and. Um, yeah, in in Europe, for my video is purposely not, um, let's say, for Europeans who have all the access to have this, but also for uh, my Africans or the Ghanaians who are here, because it's it's not easy. You know how the the Ghanaian football is. So somebody watching this and watching where um, where I am. Yeah will at least have a clue of what what it is you know how you have to go about things yeah it's it's you always have to have a reason hmm. when you don't have a reason then i don't think you have a goal that's true i yeah. mean if you don't have a reason nothing motivates you to get up and grind for the day yeah. let's let's take a few steps back and go to the bundesliga 2 which is where you played last season mm. um I, I realized that your minutes went up from last season. You got more starts mm -hmm. for your team, also compared to the previous season before. Talk to me about this particular season. I mean, we'll come to the promotion bit later, but how different was this season for you as an individual from the other seasons that you had played, especially at first? Yeah, for me, this season was uh, very, very important because um, before the end of last season, I was injured. Before the end of last season, I was injured, so I, it was a challenge to me to to make it back as soon as possible, yeah. as early as possible, because because of the pandemic, we didn't have enough time for holiday mm -hmm. or for mm -hmm. vacation. So mm -hmm. it was a big challenge for me because you know um, you are there, you are not only playing in this position, you have yeah. also uh, people there who are fighting with you mm -hmm. um, for the same position. So I worked very hard. Um, to come back before we start the season and yeah, I was able to achieve this this goal and um, like um, you said how is how important it is for me personally it was very very important for me because the season before um, before the season we all get like let's say um, a paper from the coach okay. like individually what is your goal for the season and also for the team and um, last season, I was the only player mm -hmm. who wrote that we will qualify to Bundesliga. You are joking? Yeah. Wow. I was the only player who wrote this. And that was your goal for the team? Yes, that was my goal for the team. But unfortunately, we couldn't make it. And I know um, they were thinking maybe I just wrote this um, to make, like to fill their heads, you know. But no, I know what I wrote. And... Yes, this season we came to the point again and I wrote the same thing. <laughs> I wrote the same thing and I said to myself, yeah, um, I have been in this situation twice. The first mm -hmm. one failed. Um, I cannot fail again. Even if we cannot make it to the Bundesliga, at least we have to, um, let's say, progress in a certain way where people will see that, yeah, we are, we are doing something. Mm -hmm. Then, the last the season. season, so yeah. this season was so important for me, uh, for my performance, yeah. um, uh, my injuries, because every season I, I get injured and yeah, I set goals in front of me to at least have some um, amount of assists, yeah. an amount of goals if it will be possible. Yeah. And above, above all, um, at the end of the season, will be um, free from injury. And yeah, as you can see, um, I was able to achieve all that. Hmm. Yeah. Now, the Bundesliga 2 is a very competitive league. I've followed it for at least three seasons. I mean, if, if, if I've followed it closely for at least three seasons. Bernard Tekpertes played there. Babaraman played there at a point. Yeah. Um, Phil Ofosuaya played there at a point. Quite a number of Ghanaians have passed through the German Bundesliga too. How competitive or how challenging is it to play in the Bundesliga too? It's very, very competitive, very, very challenging, very, very physical, a lot of running, everything you can think about football. 
it's in German Bundesliga. You know, where, let's say, in, mm -hmm. in Italian league, you have the more of the tactic. Yeah. In Spanish, you have the tiki-taka possession games. And, but in Germany, everything is, is included. And here you have um, people coming to play in Germany mm -hmm. because the, the league is also attractive. The league is also a good league to play. Yeah. So everybody wants to show himself. So yeah, yeah you you meet, um, you play against clubs and they, they have the mentality of winning. Almost every club has the mentality of winning. So nobody wants to lose. This is how competitive hmm. the league is, yeah. Now, I, I mentioned Barbara Mann earlier because he played for Greater Fred yeah. before yeah. you arrived there. Mm -hmm. Does his name resonate around the place or because maybe he didn't stayed there too long once he moved on the club moved on from him i mean was there anything babaraman did that has helped you in a way when you got to the club in any way um yeah i how can i say i compliment babaraman um for um, also qualifying with greater fear to so i say congratulations mm -hmm. yeah but um the club hasn't moved on from Barbara Man because they all, they talk about him often, not every day, but mm -hmm. often because we are all Ghanaians, we are coming from Ghana, yeah. but um, everybody has his own path and his own way. So when they talk about Barbara Man, they talk only about Barbara Man. Mm -hmm. And when they talk about me or to me, they talk about me alone and my, my let's path. say my path, I, I will play there. Yeah. So actually, um, yeah, just I would say just a little bit impact, but yeah, mm. it's, it's just that. Let's talk about promotion, right? You finished second in the season, mm -hmm. um, which is something I'm sure a lot of your people didn't believe was an achievable um, objective. How, do, how did that feel like? I mean, when you finally gained promotion, what were the celebrations like? What, what were the emotions like generally after the team managed to mm -hmm. gain promotion? Yeah, um, before I will talk about the celebration, um, with the issue with the promotion, like I said earlier, I was the only player who wrote that we will qualify to the Bundesliga. Mm -hmm. So as um, things went on and they realized we, we can, we can mm -hmm. qualify to the Bundesliga, um, the coach came back again to us and gave us everybody um, yeah. the papers again like at this stage what do you do what does everybody want yeah then you see now people are believing in <laughs> in what i wrote earlier yeah. and people are yeah we will be playoffs or qualify or fourth in the league and yeah it's it, it, it's just like that um in the during the season mm -hmm. i I have my own club, like in the team. I have my own club, and it's called the It's No Magic Club. And f from the beginning of the season, I have this It's No Magic all the time. You know, yeah. I say this, and they think it's like you know, some it's like a joke. But after we qualified, mm -hmm. they were all like, "It's no magic. Yeah. It's no magic. It's no magic." Unfortunately, the fans were not able to be in the in the stadium yeah. but they were outside throughout the, the the whole game and you know they cheered us after the game we went out to them we spent some time with them we came back and you know it was just unbelievable it was unbelievable we were in the stadium mm -hmm. doing nothing for almost five hours wow doing nothing just calling taking pictures <laughs> you know it you cannot describe this this yeah. this feeling yeah but yeah, individually for me, it's very important, yeah. Hmm. Um, now you've gained promotion. I'm sure that this comes with a lot of other things. First of all, I'm sure the team will have a meeting of some sort to discuss what they are going to do now that they've gained promotion going forward. I'm sure they'll have ambitions to buy players, they'll have ambitions to change some personnel and whatnot. Yeah. First of all, let's start with you. What are your ambitions now that Firth have qualified for um, the Bundesliga? Yeah, um, my ambition is, is to play in the Bundesliga. So, to not to cut the, so, the long story short, mm -hmm. I am staying in Fiat. I am staying with my team, 
to go in the Bundesliga, yeah. to enjoy the Bundesliga. And yeah, that's all. I, I will be in Fiat. Even though, yeah, I have uh, next season my contract runs out, mm -hmm. but there has um, not been any um, update or about a transfer or another club or um, something. We are just in talks with uh, about renewal of contract. So uh, as it stays, um, I will stay in Fiat to enjoy the Bundesliga. That, that sounds like great news. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about how you anticipate the Bundesliga to be. I'll give you an example. Bernard Tequete was a striker. It was fantastic mm -hmm. playing for, for Paderborn. And then um, he made a move to Fortuna Dusseldorf, I believe. Yeah. Was completely frozen out, was not getting the time he needed. And then made the move. Now he finds himself all the way in Romania. Mm -hmm. um, are you, what, what are the difficulties you anticipate making the jump up? Not just for you as an individual, but generally making the jump up from a lower division to a higher division. What are some of the situations you are anticipating will happen and how are you hoping to adjust mostly on an individual level? Yeah, on an individual level, I would say um, I don't have too much to, to adjust. I just only have to um, continue to um, be disciplined, mm. just uh, continue to make, let's say, more... Uh, more research about the mm. uh, the job I am doing, yeah. just to improve myself every each and every day in training. Mm -hmm. um, I would say go about or think about last season yeah. where I had problems during the game in training. You know, every aspect I had problem, I have to think about it, and you know, correct if I can or improve if I can. Yeah, this is all I have to do. I just think. just a few random questions about playing in Germany. Who's the most, how would I put it, um, the most competitive or the most difficult matchup you have faced as a player playing in, in Germany? In this, yeah. in this, or... On the campaign, uh, I mean, the campaign uh, just uh, gone as by. A whole. Yeah, I would say the most difficult game we I have faced was um, against uh, Hoffenheim when I was playing with uh, in Stuttgart in the Bundesliga one mm -hmm. um, in this game I was uh, I was on the bench but yeah. in the first six minutes we we got a red card and this was a game that yeah. was it was like a derby and mm. very important game for us and we had we got a red card so we have to play 10 against 11 yeah. and yeah, honestly, I was I was hoping I would not take part because we don't have the ball yeah. and we have to chase Offenheim all, all throughout. Yeah. yeah, and unfortunately, the the coach brought me in early in the second half, and yeah, yeah you have to run. I was very tired, <laughs> but yeah, you have to run. We lost, I think, four <laughs> zero. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, that, that's what, that was a very yeah, and also I think. This season against Darmstadt, also ah. we lost 4-0. Yeah, they, they were like man against man. Yeah, it, we had no chance. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> do, do Ghanaian players in the Bundesliga 2 or the Bundesliga link up? Do the, do the players in Germany have some form of association with each other? I think so, I think so. Um, but I have, in a, so I just link up with one or two players there, but I think the others. Who, the, who are those? Who are the Ghanaian players you probably um, link up with? David Atanga. Okay. I, yeah. David has yeah. been on the track up before. Yeah. Played for Halston Kiel yeah. at, yeah. at, at, yeah. at a point. Yeah. Even played for Fert at a point. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we played together before he left oh, to okay. he left to kill. We we link up a lot, yeah, and maybe once in a while we meet together, maybe in Dusseldorf when we have holidays or something, mm. and then we say hello to each other. You know, just go a little bit if we train together or in it, just eating. Mm. Yeah. I mean, not, not to, I, I'm asking this because I feel like sometimes when you are Ghanaian players in foreign land, the ability to bond together perhaps will have like advantages for you. I mean, is there a point where you see yourself maybe expanding this friendship or welfare with Atanga to maybe other Ghanaians who are? now coming in is there something like that in the works or you think that something like that will probably come by itself naturally yeah 
I I cannot tell because you know this is football. Mm. Maybe today you bond with him, yeah, and then in the after four five months transfer he has to move away, yep. and then another person comes. So I think mm. naturally or the way the business goes in the sports world, yeah, yeah, will will just bring us together or put us apart. Yeah, that's nice. Let me read a few messages that have come through. This one here uh, says that. I met Hans through his cousin boy, and honestly, he is what he talked about in his motivational video. Charlie, love you. Ye from Tema. I'm not sure if you remember Ye from Tema. Uh, I says he met you yeah, through your no. cousin. Uh, so My that's cousin what's, is here. Ah, <laughs> that's what's going on. Let's let's yeah. briefly discuss influential personalities in your life. So I'm sure your first of all your your last name rings a bell mm -hmm. when a lot of Ghanaians see it. But before mm -hmm. we even get to him. Talk to me about the influential personalities in your life. Who, who has shaped you up uh, coming up as a youngster, pre-football, now that you're playing football, and even in, in future? Who are those that have helped you to become the man that you are today? I, I, honestly, I don't uh, look up to anyone. I don't... Um, nobody has influenced me, really. But... Um, some time ago, mm -hmm. I I watched a movie, yeah. and in this movie was a statement made by the actor, and um, undisputed Boyka, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and he made a statement. He said, um, "I remember that movie." Yeah, he said, um, "I have to win. I cannot lose. Like I God created me to fight, and it was the same like me, you know." Yeah, like you spoke about my name. Yeah, I have um, my uncle played before yeah. um, for Liverpool in Wolfsburg, Schalke. He also played for the national That's team. Nice, yeah. yeah, but uh, I don't have any contact with him. How come? Yeah, I have never had any contact with him. Since you've been in Germany? Not since I have been in Germany. Since I was born. I think I have spoken to him only one time. Only once in my life. You are kidding me. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> kidding. Um, you know, I am. I am saying this not because mm -hmm. I have a problem with my uncle or with no, family. No, 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 but I am saying this to let everybody out there, any football player, or uh, that you can. You can do it. You don't need to wait for somebody who or to follow somebody's footstep, you mm -hmm. think, because mm -hmm. I think God created us and gave us, uh, gave every individual his, his or her own part, sure. you know. So from this movie, I, I am like, you know, the type of person I cannot lose. I don't want to lose. More like, if it is to be, it is up to me. Yes, I don't want to lose. And so it's my responsibility. Mm -hmm. So if... Um, uh, how can I say this? I stopped school mm -hmm. and I told my mom I want to play football. So I have only one thing, it's football. Hmm. Talking about stopping school and all that, I think just based on that, we might have to backtrack the conversation a little to find out a little mm -hmm. background. I know the background, but I'm sure <laughs> that viewers out there are aching to know the background that you're talking about. But We'll take a quick break here yeah. on the tracker. Uh, when we come back, we'll let Hans take us back into his background and where he came up in Ghana. And then we'll catapult into the national team conversation. Does he even want to play for Ghana? Has he been <laughs> called up? Is Germany courting him? A lot to be answered on the tracker when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the tracker here on City TV. We are speaking to Greater Firth midfielder Hans Nunu Sape Hans, let's talk about let's stay with the last topic you were you were on before we went for the break. You you were mentioning the fact that um, you have decided that if you are to be successful in this sport of yours, it will be up to you and up to you alone. Talk to me about making that decision to commit to football, leaving Ghana for for Germany and all that. Just walk us through that before we even progress in the conversation. Yeah. Um Firstly, like I said, with the issue of school, my mom wanted me to continue school, mm -hmm. 
But um, I told her, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I want to play football. <laughs> and this was you know, going to high school? No, like to the university. Okay, to university you know, level. To, yeah. But I said no. Because during this time, I didn't know you can go to the school and, and still play. Yeah. But my friends are, you know, playing in Division Ones and, you know, playing in some kind of mm -hmm. um, clubs. Mm -hmm. And I am at home, I'm just going to school. So I feel a little bit left out. And at this point, I was feeling, yeah, if, um, if I go to school by the time I was calculating, by the time I'm finished with university, it will be too You'll be late. Too old. I will be too late yeah. for, you know, by this time, my friends are already gone. Yeah. So I don't want my friends to, to leave me. And then I decided to, to stop the school and may, may so rest in peace. My stepfather, mm -hmm. he started the journey for me. Mm. You know, he spoke with me one day and he said, okay, you don't want to go to school. Which team do you want to play? Um, Coach Ade is my, or was my classmate, and this was the time we fired out. And um, uh, what is the name? The late Cecilia Tuk Jones. Yeah, that's a yeah. He, he was, I think, the director from Liberty or something yeah. like that. So I have to choose between fire Nord or Liberty. And then I said, yeah, I prefer Liberty to, to Fire Nord. Wow, why? Tell yeah. me about why. Yeah, all because I want to still play and still be with my friends. Ah. Because with Fire Nord, you are going yeah, to stay to in Gumoa and you live there and you don't see your friends, your family. So I prefer Liberty. I go to training, I come back, I can go and play my Moon Chendi with my friends. <laughs> and, you know, and it started from there. I was in Liberty for so many years ups and downs and then yeah things didn't well, really were you playing for the main team or liberty babies no i never played for i never played the premier league mm -hmm. only mm -hmm. liberty, liberty babies okay yeah i was also the captain of the under 20 for i think three years and then yeah it came the, for the time for promotion i was not promoted we had a lot of problems and then yeah we had a friendly game against olympics and in this game, I was playing um, number seven. Okay. But I played good. And then in the... Played as a winger? Yes. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm a utility player. You know, I can play yeah. everywhere in defense. I can even strike. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can... My friends know. Yeah. I can even... I mean, I don't doubt it. A, a lot of I'm footballers start off yeah. from a certain position and then <laughs> transition, transition yeah, to where yeah. they are. So we played. And then in the second half... Uh, we changed positions. I came to play right back. Okay. And I played well. And then after the coach, Coach Kwe, he called Liberty and he said, hey, um, we want him on loan for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. And then Saban Kwe was um, our team manager. So he called Saban Kwe and Saban Kwe said, like, um, who, which player are you talking about? And he said, yeah, his name is Sape. And he said, no. Then he asked very well, because I am a midfielder. I play in Liberty. I play for number yeah. six. Yeah. But he said I was playing number seven and right back. And during this time, Olympics needed a right back. And also number six. Mm -hmm. So Savankwe told him, yeah, I am a number six. I am not a right back, but I can play everywhere. And so it was like a jackpot also for Olympics. Mm. We spoke and then I went to Olympics. We, we were able to qualify to Premier. And then I went back again to Liberty. You know, because played. it was a loan deal. Yeah. You know, and then Olympics wanted to buy permanently, but it was difficult in this moment. Well, at, that, at that point, had Liberty seen that yeah. your star was shining and you're, you're probably you know, primed for a bigger market? You know, everything, I would say, everything happens for a reason. You mm. know, going to Olympics also opened um, a lot of doors for me. Okay. You know, they gave me the opportunity also to, to play. They trusted in me, you know, and then, yeah. yeah um, when I came back, I was like, um, on the lips of every Olympics fans, people were talking about me. So it was. When did you play when you went there? You played as a six or you played as a right I back? I played there? number six, mm -hmm. sometimes number eight. Okay. Yeah. So for Liberty, it was 
uh, very challenging because now Olympics wants to buy me. A lot of people are talking about me. And at a point in time, you know, I, 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 I like Olympics very much, but <laughs> liberty is in my heart. So wait, wait, let's, let's, make that, <laughs> let's make that distinction right now. What is your favorite Ghana Premier League team, liberty uh, or Olympics? My favorite is Olympics, but in my heart is liberty, you know, <laughs> because I love, the, uh, I love the club Olympics. Yeah. You know, the tradition, the history, yeah. the, especially the fans. Mm -hmm. You know how they insult the players, how they support. <laughs> you know, I, I, I love this, you know. <laughs> so are you saying that, I mean, when your career has come full circle and you want to come back to Ghana to play, which of the two teams would you opt for? Uh, I will opt for Liberty. Liberty? Yeah, I will wow. opt for Liberty, wow. yeah. Wow. But I will always be at the games from Olympics when we are not playing. Because I love the fans. <laughs> I love the fans. This is such yeah. an interesting dilemma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heart so, for liberty, but love for, for yeah, Olympics. Yeah. So, in this moment, it mm -hmm. was too much for liberty, for that answer, you know, and he decided to let me go to Olympics. Okay. So, um, one day, Reggae called me. Uh, Reginald Asante. Yeah, Reginald Asante, yeah. He's like a, a big brother to me, you know. Um, he called me and he said, yeah, we have a game. Um, in, at a, a cross for stadium against the national under 17. Mm -hmm. But in this time, I was, when I was in the Olympics, I was invited to the national under 20. Mm. So I said, yeah, why not? Um, I will play. I will play. So we went, we played. I played very well. I was, after the game, I was standing with um, Dada Anson. And we were, we were talking about the same issue with Olympics. And, and I said, hey, um, you are my father, you decide. If you want to sell me, I will go. If you don't want, I will stay. Mm. So we were talking and um, I think um, Otia Kenten came okay. close and he was speaking with Dada. And he said, yeah, um, why don't you let your captain, you have a good player and mm -hmm. you don't want him to join the national under 17. And he yeah. was talking about me. And he told him, no, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. he's, he has already been invited to the national under 20. Okay. So he's like too experienced for U17. Mm -hmm. And then it was, I don't, I don't know what happened, but directly the conversation switched to the player Olympics wanted to buy from Liberty. Mm -hmm. And he was telling Dada, hey, into Dada, um, Saa Korana Liberty phone uh, Olympics phone person move dada up 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 say un ton men ton at that very moment dada mm -hmm. looked at me and then he looked at Oti and he asked him the boy you are talking about is the same player you want him to come to the national under 17 and then he said to him don't sell him <laughs> and it, that very moment he yes. said when I go home, I will tell Olympics I will not sell him and yeah, but already I have played a tournament mm -hmm. from an, a tournament from these Italian people. So with Liberty Baby. With Liberty. Okay. But this time I was in Olympics. Oh. But Reginald invited me, me to come and to play come the, and play the mm, tournament. Mm, mm. And then from this tournament This tournament that have scouts and things come yes, to work. Yes. So um the the under twenty had to fly to Qatar. And I wanted to also join. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, we had a meeting with Bo, um, Celestete, George Freye, and Dada Anson, whether I go with under 20 or I go to Italy. Mm. Because the Italians called and they, they wanted me to come for trials. Yes. Yeah, but I, I cannot say anything. They decided and they voted. And two said I should go to Italy. One said I should go to and okay I go to Italy and God willing I went to Italy mm -hmm. and everything went well and yeah I I stayed tell me about that so is that how you transitioned over to Germany and Stuttgart yeah in, the, in which Italian team was this Hellas Verona Hellas Verona yeah. so you you played in the trials you excelled and then how, 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 how did you how did you transition from the trial phase impress and then end up in Germany. That's the, I, I, I want to be able to bridge that particular situation. <laughs> this is a little bit uh, a little bit difficult situation, but I will make it. Try uh, and summarize nice as much way. as yeah. you can. Yeah, with the with the trials, it went well, 
we went, uh, we trained with the second team the first mm -hmm. day. The second day we trained with the second team again. And the mm -hmm. third day it was a friendly game between the second team and the first team. Okay. We went there, we played, uh, I think two times 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. But um, we played only the second half. Okay. And then after the second half, yeah, we played. For me, I think it was normal. Yeah. But the next day I came to training with the second team, they said, hey, you are not training. So, wow. and in this time I didn't understand the Italian and the team manager also cannot speak good English. <laughs> and he said, you are not training. So I was thinking maybe I have done something or they are mm -hmm. sending me back to Ghana and I was so scared. I was sitting there, they changed, they are going to training, I was still sitting there. Mm -hmm. So one guy who was also playing there, his yeah. name is Salifu, he came and he said, yeah, they said you are not training, but they didn't say the reason why. So I was there and they said, yeah, they, somebody will come and pick you. And okay, they picked me. And in my head, when I get back to the hotel, I have to call my mom mm -hmm. and tell them, yeah, I'm coming back to Ghana. <laughs> I don't know what I have done. Yeah. But then we drove and then we passed by I saw, you know, like the airport to drive this way, but we drove straight and I don't know where we are going. <laughs> <laughs> so we drove again and we went to the first team mm -hmm. and then they told me, yeah, the first team trainer wants me to come and train with the first team. Oh, wow. And this was, this was it. I was all the time training with the first team and they wanted to um, give me a contract, but yeah, there was a little bit of misunderstanding. We had a lot of misunderstandings. And this was uh, the part I, I want everybody to know, like to listen to your mm -hmm. inner self. I got the opportunity f to go to Germany through yeah. some people, through my agent now. Mm -hmm. But I was with another agent okay. and I don't want to, um, like, you know, change my agency. Mm -hmm. But we had a little bit misunderstanding, so I decided to, to change. While but, you were training with the first team at Hellas Verona, okay? But I just decided to change to Germany because I felt I wasn't treated um, you weren't being fairly, treated well. fairly in, in Italy. Mm -hmm. But also I cannot um, just change or just go away, mm -hmm. you know? So I had, um, for some time, I had difficulties um, because you couldn't um, play because... I couldn't play, I couldn't train. Because you were signed to one agency and you're trying yes. to make the jump to another Calls agency. Calls were not being answered and stuff like that, you know, a whole lot of things. Yeah, so one day I just decided in the night to, to go away. Wow. So I parked my bags, I spoke with some people, I know they can help me. And then in the night, I think at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m., I left the academy and then I, my journey started. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Interesting, interesting stuff there. So Hans just walked us through right from his mom mm -hmm. and his days. He didn't tell you, but he's a, well, you come from Choco, right? Jamestown? No, I come from Palladium. I Palladium. was born in Palladium. What's, like, what's, what's the difference uh, between like Timber Palladium? Market, you know. What are the Actually, there's, there's, no there's no really difference. Can they all be classified as Manchagbona? No. Manchagbona has its own place. Own place. Choco has its, its own, own place. place. Palladium is yeah, its own place. You know, Bukom, Amamomo, Timber Market, they all have their, mm. their own place. So you are from Palladium? Yeah, I'm, I'm from Palladium, but I grew up in uh, oh, Madi Dinko. Gamashi Dinko. instead? Oh, so yeah, it's like Gamashi. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So that's, yeah. that's, that's but interesting. I lived yeah. also um, part of my life in Choco. Mm. Yeah, mm. in Choco Chimu. Wow. I'm sure they are watching and I'm sure they will be <laughs> pep, like pepped up. I mean, excited to see you all. Yeah, they let's are, they let's are. get some highlights from Hans uh, on the Bundesliga 2 season that has just gone by just before we take our second break. So we have highlights from his second season. When we are done showing that, we'll take our break. And when we come back, we'll talk about the national team proper. Let's get those highlights now and then let's see what Hans was up to the whole of last season. Welcome back to the tracker here on City TV. We are still talking to Gotha Firth midfielder Hans Nunusape. Um, you've seen the highlights for yourself. Passing range, 
is absolutely nice. And he knows how to put a tackle when he needs to. Um, he didn't add those ones to the highlights, but the tackling is there as well. A lot of messages have been coming through for him. Let me read a few of them before we go. And this one says, um, um, Wete from Gamashi. Hans is more than a good player who has played exceptionally uh, in the German Bundesliga too. I've watched him and followed him from day one. He's a genius and is very calculated with his moves on the field. Uh, and to help his team qualify uh, is something Wete. really special. We are proud of him as Ghanaians. Um, Wete from Buzia, Gamashi, yeah, yeah, yeah. with that particular <laughs> one. So Hans definitely knows who uh, Wete is. He says, uh, you are more than a conqueror. This one here um, says, keep soaring higher, bro. More to come from Tweepers, I think. Trippers. Yeah, Trippers. Okay, yeah. I think that's what it is. Uh, this one says, Hans, we are totally behind you. Keep shining. Moja Havana, uh, Hadaway Fan Club with that one. Uh, this one here says, mm. This is Emmanuel Nikwe Tete. Says, Big ups uh, to Hans Nunu Sape. Congrats to him and his team. And uh, all the best, bro. You are the real deal. This one's from Kobe. Says, Hi, please. I'm Kobe, Hans's cousin. Please tell Hans that he really inspires me to work harder. Really proud of him. Bra Aite from Palladium. Says, Hans, continue mm -hmm. to work hard in your career and always push to the mm. top. Wish you all the best. Um, this one here says, please tell Hans that I'm coming for a jersey with his autograph. Hans, Charlie, tell boy to organize Pulu. Make me go swim small. <laughs> <laughs> so these are people who know Hans personally. <laughs> texting him, Hans, let's talk about Germany, Ghana, Ghana, Germany. First of all, there's something strange happened in Ghana's last two collapse. Two Ghanaians were invited. Jamie Levelin, uh, I believe, played for Firth. Mm -hmm. And then there was another guy from HSV. Um, invited yeah, Ambrosius. So yes, Ambrosius. Both of them apparently agreed to play and then pulled out in the last minutes um, on their decision. First of all, how do you feel about that as somebody who is also eligible to play for both nations? How do you feel about those two guys and their decision to pull out? Yeah, um, how can I explain this? Honestly, I don't know the reason why they pull out. Um, but I have been in this situation um, before. This was when I was with Stuttgart, um, mm. when we were playing the Bundesliga. Um, I would say I wasn't given a call up. Mm -hmm. I was um, disappointed during this time. But I went back and I recollected on a lot of things. Mm. Like, you know, I give um, myself the benefit of the doubt. I, okay, maybe. I wasn't called up because I, I have not played a lot of games. So, you know, so during this time, I wasn't really disappointed mm -hmm. um, for me not being called up yeah. because I know, okay, maybe I have not done much enough to be called up. But this time, I, I think I deserve to be called up. You think you've and done I, enough? Yeah, I've, I think I've done enough because um, I have worked for all these years, mm. not because of anything because of color, because of, you know, to play in the best um, leagues, to play in the best clubs. It's, for me, it's, um, I would say it's appalling from the way the, uh, our big men sometimes manage the things, because I am not the only player who is in this situation. There are a lot of players out there who are in the same situation and they cannot voice out. Hmm. We are out there, in somebody's land, we are working, we are playing, we are doing what we love to do. It's just a little bit of respect, a little bit of help, a little bit of um, thinking from our big men about us, just to help us, mm -hmm. just to push us so that we can improve on ourselves in our career. How would you feel when you come to training and somebody asks you if the big men from your country are blind. Hmm. That's how, how, how would you feel when our big men give us this kind of respect? We will also attain a lot of respect there. Are you saying that, like I said before I asked the question, you are eligible to play for Germany, you are eligible to play for Ghana? Do you want to play for Ghana and the Black Stars? I, I want you to state that categorically. Yeah, 100% I want to play for Ghana Black Stars. I have said this before, I think, two or three years ago in an interview. 
I, w I want to play for my motherland. This is where I grew up. This is where I was born. I love Ghana. There has never been any holiday where I have never been in Ghana. And Black Stars is part of Ghana. So 100%, I would love to play for Ghana. Have you been courted by the Germans in terms of making a nationality switch? Um, we, at a point in time, I, I think um, before the pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, we, spoke about, we spoke about something like that, I think two years ago with my manager. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't uh, like concrete, you know. We just spoke like freely. Mm -hmm. about it because they, they also expect or they wish that I would be called to represent Ghana. And they have also been waiting for this moment. But mm -hmm. whenever it comes, it just um, passes by. But um, there, there isn't any concrete thing about changing nationality. Um, nationality to play for Germany or something like that. No, I'm, I'm a Ghanaian and I'm proud to be a Ghanaian. Now that you've made it to the Bundesliga, do you think that perhaps you will be harder to ignore now? Because, yes, we've called players from the English fourth tier and stuff like that. And I'm very sure that the Bundesliga 2 is miles above the English fourth tier. But do you believe that now that you've made it to the Bundesliga, you will be harder to ignore and perhaps your call-up chances will be enhanced? Um, I don't believe I will be harder to be ignored. But... I think my call-up chances will improve um, to be in the Bundesliga. It's, it's the reason why I said I don't believe um, is because when I was in Stuttgart, I was very close to being called up mm -hmm. and then it failed. Yeah. And there, there is one, uh, one big sports journalist during this time who was like, you know, uh, we had conversation mm -hmm. and he told me, yeah, hey, there is going to be a call up and I know you will be called so just wait for, for a call from the coach. But the call never came. And he was so disappointed that he don't he doesn't even know how to, you know, come approach back you and again. Yeah. Approach me again, you know. But for me it's not it's no problem. Again, when I signed my uh, when I signed uh, with Puma, mm -hmm. We spoke about the national team. Okay, they spoke to um, the national team. I don't know who they wrote with. The next day we had um, lunch, and the reply which came was, "I am not in the na in the Black Stars radar. I am not in the Black Stars radar." And I was so. I would say I was so disappointed at the same time I was so angry mm. that how is it possible that okay if there Played is a radar, thousand minutes yeah is if there if there is a radar mm -hmm. how does this radar operate <laughs> because when I look back at the collapse yeah. I ask myself okay I play in the German Bundesliga too this is a league that is way above a lot of Liga one league one yep. teams yeah yeah and I am not in the radar, but somebody playing somewhere, example in Israel or so, so, so and so in the fourth league somewhere, they are in the radar. So how does this radar work? And I am here not only speaking for myself, mm -hmm. I am speaking for <coughs> all the people, all the people who have left Ghana to play outside the world and they cannot voice out. Because even a little bit of attention, a little bit help, a little bit call up, one time, it's also a breakthrough for all of us out there. Yeah. There are people out there, I would say, they are also playing um, in, in, in the league. Uh, our goalkeeper, yeah. we have a lot of goalkeeping problems. Sometimes I think we think yeah, it's, it's not just like that. We know how our, our national team was before mm -hmm. and now. The big men, they are doing well. It's not easy to, to, to do this kind of jobs. Mm -hmm. But we plead with them to at least, if possible, they can 
give a, a better excuses than I am not in the radar or a player is not in the radar or to lie to the media, to lie to the public. Mm. Even hearing the coach had a meeting with me. Mm -hmm. In which way? Yeah, you don't call me, you don't call me. You have your reasons why you didn't invite me. Yeah. Just be true to yourself and tell the people why you didn't invite me. But not to tell the people what they want to hear. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting thoughts there. Just finally, before we go, let me read a few messages before we wrap it up. Um, this one here from Ni Saka says, Ni and Ni fame from Dan Soman. Hans is our manager and we know God is the reason for his success. We love him so much. This one here from Jerome from Hardway says, A very warm welcome to you. It's lovely to have you among us. Uh, this one here from Pablo Jr. from Tafo says, Please help tell Hans to keep working hard and I do believe his words and I hope the Black Stars will call him up through uh, by his grace, okay. Um, this one here says, Please tell Hans we are behind him. Very good player, stay focused, and the sky is the limit. Anyway, does he relate ex Black Stars player Hans Edusape KLM from Ghana? Yes, Hans Edusape is definitely his uncle. He's touched on that KLM. already, um, <laughs> in the bulletin, uh, in the in the uh, in the show as it was going on. Hans, thank you very much for bringing us this very nice first jersey. Um, yes, we can have that and show it to the camera. You can hold the other side. Yeah, so that's okay, very okay, nice there. Okay, so, okay, 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 yeah, yeah, got it right there. So 14. Hey, chew. Hey, chew. 14 has Sape there. Um, really, really, really interesting um, stuff there. So it's it's nice. I don't know if we can do a second. You can do a second autograph for us. I have my <laughs> little autograph pen okay. in my pocket. So you can do a bigger one for me on the number here. Okay. And then we can uh, get on with it. Yep. Uh, so yes, there you have it there. Hans Nuno Sape there. Uh, that's all from us here on the tracker today. See you same time next week on City TV.